Hello everyone, this is Strawberry Shorty here with my let's play of a horror visual novel called The Letter by, I think it's Ying Ying Mobile? <clears throat> so I actually uh, kickstarted That was quieter than that usually is I actually kickstarted this game at one of the highest tiers a long time ago, and they were the only thing that I kickstarted that did not shirk me on the rewards. So, <clears throat> the Ermengarde Mansion. It was built for Lord William and Lady Elizabeth Ermengarde of Luxborn, humble ambassadors of peace and beloved by their people. Both were well known for their compassion and generosity, never failing to extend a helping hand to anyone in need. Under their influence and wealth, what was once a small, sleepy village grew to a prosperous and bustling town. However, the seasons of joy eventually ended when the good nobles perished at the hands of a great plague. Their riches and legacy were henceforth passed on to their only child, Lady Charlotte Ermengarde. The mansion has stood since the 1620s, a witness to a very long history of joy and pain. After Lady Charlotte committed suicide, the great house was eventually left uninhabited. And that is when it began. Surrounding villagers spoke of seeing and hearing unearthly things, of cries and howls that filled the nights, and hearsay of a mysterious woman roaming the hollowed halls aimlessly. People who dared enter its walls were simply never heard from again. Even after 400 years, these stories remain, much like the house itself. Whispers about the once great house, its legend and its curse, still fall upon the villagers' ears. In spite of this, the current owners are convinced that these stories are nothing more than a hoax. With little regard for the truth, they had Briar Realty Corporation place the property back on sale. Like Pandora's box, the secrets that lie inside await to be discovered by brave souls. No matter what happens, take care not to be consumed by the curse. Good luck. <clears throat> this is the first... Isabella. This is the first recording I'm doing on Windows 10. <clears throat> Hello? Isabella? Are you there? Where are you? A familiar, jittery voice comes from the other end. Oh, hey Rose! I'm at St. Goretti High. What's the matter? What do you mean, what's the matter? It's the mansion, silly. I'm here and you're late. Jeez, we're on shift together. You promised! Oh my god, please don't tell me you forgot! You were planning on leaving me to check this place out on my own, weren't you? You chickened out! Calm down. You know I take my promises seriously. I will say, this game has very good art. I'd like to believe that, so hurry up and get here. This place is huge. A bit too quiet since no one's lived here since, like, forever, but beautiful nonetheless. And good voice acting. Why are you so surprised? This isn't the first time you've been there. I know. I just wish I could live in a place like this. I've always kind of wanted to live in a mansion, but I think just the costs would just not be worth it. It really takes my breath away. Yeah, well, I wouldn't be so sure about that. Not after the rumors that say it's haunted. I also kind of want to visit a haunted house, but also kind of don't, so... I don't Jeez, know. Jeez, never mind those rumors. Ghosts aren't real after all. And even if they are, which they are not, they can't do anything. They're nothing but spirits. You don't know that! They might be listening or watching right now, and they might not be happy with you enough to curse you. I'm gonna try turning the music down a little bit. Might just be this one track, but it's a little loud. <clears throat> no offense, sweetie, but that's a bit of a stretch. Uh, believe it or not, it's better to be careful. Right. You know, not every property we sell will end up with a dead body stuffed in a sofa. And I think that mansion is where we'll likely find another one. I can feel it. That is so creepy. They found a dead body in a that sofa. That was one time, Isabella! Loosen up! I, I don't think I would be listening up if that happened to me. Wait, just get here ASAP, please. I'm getting bored being here on my own. Bored being in a haunted mansion all by yourself? Fine, fine. Let me just finish up here. <clears throat> I'll be right there soon. Okay, see you. Bye. So I've had this game for like forever, but just always put off playing it. Oh, look at the birds flying out the window. Those are good graphics. She hangs up before I can respond. Rose, still charming as ever. And who was that? See, this is where I had to stop playing when I tried to initially record my Let's Play on my older computer. Because the character, this character, turned up completely blue. I look up from my phone to see Rebecca, Becca, giving me a questioning look. Oh, that? It's just Rose. The one who trained you. 
Where's the rest of the dialogue? Rose, the one you said who trained you for your job back when you started? You're working together again? Just for this property. We've been scoping out that big mansion down Anselm Village after the renovations. Today is sort of its grand opening to the public. The RC wants to give it one last check before we let potential <laughs> buyers tour it this afternoon. Hold on. Is this the same mansion you've been telling everyone about? Stop going off script, Becca! Wait, mansion? That big spooky one you've been telling everyone about? Didn't you keep saying how it just gave you the creeps? It's my job. You actually went there? And you're going back? I don't have a choice, I'll get fired. Well, I did promise Rose I wouldn't ditch her. And besides, a job is a job. Gotta do what you gotta do to make a living. <laughs> as soon as those words leave my mouth, Becca lets out a soft chuckle. What's so funny? Nothing! It's just that I didn't expect you to say that. Coming from you, it sounds so... out of character. Again, I like how the character portraits are animated and then you have the birds flying in the background, the sun sparkles. Like, it, it looks really quality. I mean, <clears throat> no offense, but you've been freaking out ever since you got assigned to it. She's doing it again! I mean, no offense, but you've been freaking out about the place being creepy ever since you got assigned to it. Cursed rumors and all. I honestly thought you'd back out. Not all the time. I could really use a huge amount of cash right now, and this is just the fastest way to get it. Plus, listen to this. Briar Realty wants it sold as soon as possible, and the agent who lands the deal is going to get a huge bonus. They never give bonuses like that. Getting that would make life so much easier. They're desperate, I'm desperate, it's perfect. A sympathetic look crosses her face. You know, if you're really in urgent need of money, you could have just asked me or Ashton. We can always let you borrow, and you can pay us back whenever. I have to keep myself from groaning out loud. In the years I've known her, I can already tell what to expect once she has that expression. I also played uh, The Diary, which is like the prequel to this. It's an app, and I think it centers around Rebecca and Ashton's relationship, like when they first meet. I don't remember that much, though. Becca! I've noticed that you've been living off instant noodles these past few weeks. She crosses her arms and grimaces at the thought. Her voice slightly rises as she begins to scold me. Instantly, I'm reminded why Becca excels at teaching boisterous teenagers. Stop eating junk! They're cheap, but they're not good for you! How old is she supposed to be? <laughs> she looks practically like a teenager herself. You'll definitely end up in the hospital if you keep at it! Does the game have multiple endings? Where's the save? Oh, I'm on my journal. Oh. Help, help. That's a good sign. Look at profiles. <clears throat> Let's look at these. Oh, we got ages. So, is Maria Isabella Grace Cruz Santos is... I think that's supposed to be 20, not 26. We even got her religion. She's Roman Catholic. She's a fine arts graduate. She likes cinnamon rolls, dogs, food, police procedural dramas, teleseries with a Y, comedies, and karaoke. She is the third child among seven, daughter of a laundry woman and a jeepney driver? The jeepney. She went to a public school and was an average student, but took to art easily. Eventually, she pursued a degree in fine arts as encouraged by her father. However, when the man was diagnosed with a terminal illness, she had to stop studying to make money. It was Isabella's aunt who helped her get work overseas in order to earn more money than any local job could get her. Rose Cooper became her mentor as soon as she started as an agent at BRC. It's been five years since she met her neighbor, Rebecca. She met Ashton during an unfortunate incident involving her first sale at Devlin Court, and later, Zachary threw him. Is that the incident with the body? <laughs> well, we don't, we don't get Rebecca in here? Yeah, yeah I was gonna save. Like two saves. <clears throat> well, I'm nice, so I'm gonna say I eat other things too. Hey! I eat other things too! I folded my arms across my chest, mimic her posture, and giving her the best brown I can muster. The same one I'd use with my younger siblings when they're being difficult. Instead, she only raises an eyebrow at me. That's not going to work on me! And I saw it when you were cleaning your flat last week. The instant noodle cups outnumber everything else. You're just exaggerating. Did you even see what's in my cupboard yet? I'm not just living on instant noodles alone. I've got canned beans, peas, tuna, ham, and even hamburgers in there. Shouldn't have hamburgers in your cabinet and tuna is disgusting. Becca's wrinkling her nose by the time I get to the end of the small list. She even went a little green on the last one. I would have laughed a little at that 
If I didn't know, it would only lead to more reprimands from her. Aren't those the same ones you won from the grocer's raffle more than a year ago? Oh, I sincerely hope you're checking the date stamps on those things before eating them. I don't want a repeat of last year. In any case, those are still not exactly healthier choices, Belle. She shakes her head, possibly laughing at some funny distant memory. When she looks up, I immediately brace myself. More words from her. Sometimes it's just better to let Becca talk until she's out of things to say. But when she turns her attention back to me, there is only warmth in her smile. <sighs> what am I going to do with you? She says this more to herself than me, her voice shifting to something kinder, even motherly, if I'm looking for the exact word. I hope you know that it's impossible not to worry about you when you're like this. You don't have to keep eating the same thing. <laughs> Didn't I tell you before? You're always free to reheat my leftovers. I already told you before, you're always free to reheat the food in my fridge. See, we're gonna end up in like a corpse party situation where you gotta say some exact lines in an exact way and she is gonna get us killed. Thanks, Becca. I really appreciate it, but you don't need to keep babying me. Yes, you do. You've been taking care of me since after I moved here. You have to take a break sometime. And before you ask again, no. You know I'm not a fan of borrowing money. And I'm not going to ask you to give me what you earned hard for yourself. What you earned hard for yourself? That doesn't sound right. Ugh, you and your pride. But, suit yourself. The offer stays on the table, though. An odd response, if only to get her to drop a topic. I guess I should also mention that because I was one of the funders of this game, I funded, like, the collector's edition that came in the big box with, like, a bunch of extras. I have played this part before. Um... Because I, we beta tested it. So, I'll let you know when I get to the part I haven't played. Like, it's been a while, though. I don't really remember too much. But I'm pretty certain I will never take that offer. Ever. It has nothing to do with pride. I've simply seen plenty of times how friendships can take a turn for the worse just because of a few unpaid debts. I don't want something like that to happen between me and Becca. We may argue about a lot of small, petty things, but she already feels like a real sister to me. I don't want to lose that friendship over something so trivial. Becca's movements, when she takes a quick glance at... Something behind me snapped me out, snaps me out of my thoughts. Well, enough chit-chat. Lunch is ending, and my students will be back any minute. We can catch up later. Good luck with your clients. You better treat us to lunch or something if you get that sale. You bet! With a small smile, she returns to her desk and begins sifting through the pages of a rather thick history book. She's probably working on next week's lesson plan. Or trying, at least. Her eyes are distant, and she doesn't seem too attentive to whatever is on the page. <coughs> As if she heard my thoughts, Becca starts coughing heavily. Her hand hastily goes to her mouth to stifle the sounds. Ah, this is precisely why I followed her here. For someone who makes a habit out of worrying about other people, Becca sure forgets how to take care of herself. Hey, you sure you can manage on your own? I mean, you're still a bit feverish. Ah, oh, hush, dear. Don't you worry about me. Worried about the students. I'll just drink some medicine and I'll be right as rain. Do not drink medicine, take spoonfuls. I level her with a flat look. She has a cold- she has had a cold for a couple of days now, something about the strange weather not agreeing with her lately. And despite my advice to take the week off and rest, I found her apartment empty when I dropped by this morning. She even left the medicine her doctor prescribed. Luke is being stubborn now. You shouldn't even be working right now. <laughs> Seriously, you big baby. I'll be fine. For now, just go to work and stop making that rose girl wait for you. I'll call you if I still feel bad, and you can come pick me up if it makes you feel any better. She offers me a reassuring smile and I can only sigh. Why do I even bother? There's no stopping her when she's decided on something. Defeated, I reach inside my bag and pull out the same bottle of medicine she left earlier. She looks at it warily when I place it in front of her. Unfortunately for her, this is one thing I'm not letting her have her way. All right, but don't forget what the doctor said. Drink this on time. I'll see you later, okay? There's an amused gleam in her eyes when she shifts them back to me. <laughs> Look who's playing the mother hen now. Rebecca! <laughs> okay, okay. I won't tease anymore. I'll make sure to drink it, Mom. Before I can retort, she casts another look at the clock. I take that as a sign to finally end the conversation on my short visit. I would stay until she drank it. With a small wave, I leave her alone in the classroom and her thoughts. Hmm. This is an interesting thing. I think this might actually affect, like, the paths a bit. I don't know. So, we, we have no relationship with ourselves. I hope someone just has like a really high narcissistic relationship with themselves. I hail a passing taxi to take me to the property as soon as I leave the school grounds. Here's the school. The mansion is some ways out in the countryside, but I don't have trouble giving the driver directions. There's some birds again. 
Apparently, everyone in Luxembourg, like, you want to say Luxembourg, Luxborn City knows of it, including every bit of rumor surrounding the place. In fact, just the mention of its name is enough for locals to give you cautious, sidelong glances. I learned that the hard way the first time I commuted there, and it only boosted my belief that there's something more to the house. Even the news of it being renovated and placed back up on the market has caused us quite a stir. Thankfully, it died down a few weeks later. The place would have become a lot harder to sell otherwise. I avert my eyes from the window once the buildings shrink in the distance. We get a glimpse of the countryside soon after, soon. Although a quick glance to my, at my watch tells me we're still a few minutes away from our destination. Might as well get some work done. Rose did ask me to review the mansion's documents. I already looked them over last night, but you never know when things may go wrong. I suspect very soon. Life has ways of messing things up like that. Halfway through reading the papers, my phone rings again. I pick it up without looking, neatly tucking it between my ear and shoulder. It's probably just Rose again anyway. Which means it's probably not Rose. Rose? Guess again. That voice. Ash. Bingo. <clears throat> hey, what's up? Just checking if you're still cool later this evening. You mean that thing with Zack? He looks like a Castlevania protagonist. Yeah. He even called in the middle of the night just to remind me. No, don't worry. I didn't forget. I'll be there. Cool. I'll see you later. What time do you get off? Around 5, 6 p.m.? I don't know. It's the first day of the Ermengarde Mansion's open house, and we're expecting quite a number of potential buyers. I'll be booked the whole afternoon. Ermengarde Mansion? You know, the big Jacobean mansion at Anselm Village? I'm on my way there right now, actually. Jacobean? On your own? Yeah, well, Rose is already there, but yeah. I see. Looks like the scaredy cat finally toughened up. Shut up! Ash chuckles and I can't roll my eyes upon hearing you. <laughs> I'll see you later. Drop me a call when you're done. I'll see if I can pick you up. Whatever. Bye. Stupid asshole, always teasing me when he sees a chance. I'll show him who's tough. Oh, our journal updated. Before going to the Ermengarde Mansion, Isabella Santos dropped by St. Garay High School to check on Rebecca Gales. The former reminded the latter to take her flu medicine before leaving. On the way to the mansion, Isabella received a phone call from Ashton Gray? Trey? Frey? Reminding her of Zachary Steele's movie premiere that night. There's no E after premiere. It takes a few more minutes until I finally reach the infamous mansion. I have to admit, the entire property does look wonderful from the outside. And there are them birds again. Yet despite all this, it does nothing to hide that something is just wrong. It looks a little unclean. The surrounding area is unusually silent, and only the rustling of leaves can be heard as the occasional breeze passes. While Anselm Village is just a few miles away, everybody keeps their distance on purpose. Perhaps out of fear or the horror of falling under the mansion's curse. Somehow, it makes me feel sad. The lack of immediate human presence just makes this place all the more eerie than it has any right to be. If it's uncanny in broad daylight, I can't imagine how this place looks at night. Are you planning to go inside that place, Missy? The voice nearly makes me jump out of my skin. Without completely taking my eyes away from the house, I give the driver a confused nod. The beat passes while I wait for him to say more, but his only answer is a non-committal hum. Belatedly, it occurs to me that he must have been waiting for my payment. I mentally slap myself for spacing out, probably hand him the fare with an apologetic look. I expected him to leave as soon as I've paid, but there's a hesitant expression on him, as if something hasn't been said yet. Is there something wrong? Look, Missy, I'm sure you've heard what the people are telling everyone about that place. Nobody likes to be disturbed when they're at peace, and I'm pretty sure whatever they say is in that house doesn't want to either. I admit they did a good job fixing it up, but there must have been a reason why even distant relatives of the family who used to own the house never lived in there despite inheriting it. No wonder they wanted to get rid of it. M Maybe they just didn't like it? You never know. He drives off after, but what he has said left a foreboding feeling in my gut. I breathe out a heavy sigh as I approach the house. After hearing enough of the rumors, I should have expected the conversation to take that turn. But I'm already here, backing out is completely out of the question. It's not like I have a choice anyway. If I want to get that bonus and commission one way or another, I've got to sell this property. The door is ajar when I get to it, however, while my own copy of the keys dangle uselessly in my hand. Rose must have left it open when she arrived. That's weird. We may be the only people here this early, but I've never known her as someone careless. Look at the pretty blonde girl. She's got a lot of hair. Entering, what greets me inside leaves me gaping. They've cleaned every corner, waxed the floor, dusted the antique, searched every nook, cranny, and crevice, and made it spick and span. All for the sake of making the mansion more enticing to the modern day lords and ladies. But no matter how hard they try, the mansion still looks as soulless as ever. As though it's going to eat you alive. If you ask me, they should have just listened to what other people have been telling them and leave this place alone. 
Some things in this world are better left alone, never to be disturbed ever Rose? again. Rose? I call out. Rose, I'm here. Where are you? I like the echo effect. I wonder if this blonde girl is Charlotte. My voice echoes softly through the hallways. Oh, who am I kidding? In a place this big, I don't think she'll hear me no matter how deafening the silence is. She could be all the way on the other side of the property for all I know. Quickly, I reach for my phone and dial her number. But... The number you have dialed has not been recognized. Please check and try again. What do you mean, has not been recognized? We were just talking a while ago. It's not like she was eaten by the house, right? Or... Or maybe the ghost did hear us talking and spirited her away, right? Right? No, Isabella, don't be ridiculous. She probably just wandered deeper into the house and lost her signal or something. I dial her number again, hoping the call will connect this time. The number you have dialed has not been recognized. Please check and try again. But to no avail. Oh boy. I have a very bad feeling about this. Rose? If you can hear me, please come out. Come on, Rose! This isn't funny! You know this place gives me the creeps. No answer. This isn't going to work. The place is big. She could be anywhere. I need to start looking for her. I take a deep breath before venturing deeper into the mansion. Taking a couple of steps forward, I notice something move over the grand staircase. What the hell? Rose? Rose, is that you? I didn't see anything. Not funny! I'm leaving you if you don't come out! Not coming out, huh? Fine, I'm going! Okay, that's a lie. She's my friend, I can't really leave until I know she's alright. Going desperate, I try to contact her number again. Come on, please give me something. Please, Lord. Yes, finally. Hello? Hello? Rose, I'm here at the mansion. Where the hell are you? She doesn't respond, but there's a heavy static coming from her side. I sincerely hope it doesn't get cut off before I can get an answer from her. Rose, come on. Where are you? A few moments pass until the static eventually starts to quiet down. I'm at what? The attic? Why? Crap, I got cut off. Man, I really do I really need to go there? With how deep inside the mansion the attic is, there's barely any signal there. No wonder I can't contact her. But why is she there? Out of all places, she just has to make me go fetch her in the creepiest room of this place. Is she doing this to get back at me for being late? Whatever, I'll just go. The sooner I meet up with her, the sooner I'll feel better about being here. I carefully make my way up the staircase. My legs wobble as I mentally curse the fact that I've chosen real estate instead of picking a career that doesn't involve strange abandoned houses. Upon reaching the top, the grand hallway greets me. It branches out to the two major wings of the mansion, the east and west wing. This was another thing where when I played it on my old computer, the, the drapes just were completely blue. There are two attics here, one on each side. Two attics? But the east one has been converted to a storage room of sorts, and somehow I find it at least likely for Rose to wander there by herself. Besides, she never did like going into stuffy storage rooms. So I headed towards the west wing first, where a simple wooden door at the end of the hall opens to a small room. Inside is another set of steps leading to the second attic. Unlike the grand staircase, though, the stairs to the attic are steep and narrow, made of old stones and covered with a thick coating of dust that kicks up into the air with every step. Thank god it's still daytime. If it wasn't for the light streaming through the door behind me, I might easily stumble and fall. With how old the place is, there's no light fixtures to illuminate the cramped passage up. Why didn't they bother to add one here when they renovated? Escapes me. Sheesh. They did it with the rest of the house. A small bedroom welcomes me at the end. It looks exactly as it did the last time I've been here. Full of dust, worn out, and faded by time. The last time I've been here. That doesn't, doesn't sound right. I think there's a few parts where the wording is a bit off. Odd. I thought they cleaned everything. Did the crew miss this room? <clears throat> oh, cleanliness is the least of my concerns right now. The more pressing matter is Rose. She's not here. Was I dreaming when I talked to her a while ago? Did I mishear her? <clears throat> no, no. It couldn't have been a dream. After all, the creepy ambience of this estate is doing such a remarkable job of making sure I stay alert and awake. And I'm sure she said she's here. Is this a prank? Or maybe that phone call was Rose's last message to me before the curse got to her? Ugh, shut up, Brain. You're not helping. Don't make this scarier than it already is. But if she's not here, then where is she? <laughs> what the hell was that? That's it. I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving. We must have angered the spirits living here. I knew disturbing this mansion was a bad idea right from the very start. But nobody listened. Be fucking realistic, they said. They think I'm cuckoo because I believe in curses and ghosts and all that. Me and my outlandish backwater country beliefs. I've always strived to be a model employee, but not this time, no. I'm turning back for the sake of my sanity. Briar Realty can find another agent who is more fucking realistic to tour people around this haunted house. I don't like cursing. Before leaving, I take one last look at the gloomy old room. Just a check. Huh? What's this? <clears throat> my worries about Rose's whereabouts must have caused me to miss it when I first entered the room. 
but there's clearly something on the floor. It looks a like- A letter? Is it the letter? Lying on the ground, just a couple inches away from my feet. Out of sheer curiosity, I lean down and pick it up. <clears throat> Strange. I don't recall seeing this the last time I was here. A few days back, me and a few other agents inspected the mansion to prepare for today. I had been the last to look inside the attic and leave, and this certainly hadn't been here before. Someone must have left it in this room since then. Did Rose leave this for me? Was she here a while ago? I couldn't have missed her though, could I? There's only one set of stairs leading to the attic. The letter isn't exactly in pristine condition. In fact, it looks rather ancient. The paper is so thin and rough, I'm worried it'll fall apart if I so much as touch it. But with great care, I open it, and what I read shakes me to my core. What? What? Oh my god. We look like a completely different person right there. Isn't this from our diary? Nothing but the words help me fills the page, all of it seemingly written with a crimson shaded pen. Or blood. I gulp. The same phrase just goes on and on until... Send this to five people or else. Or else what? It's a chain letter. I haven't thought about chain letters in ages. Or else what? As quickly as I can, I scan the back of the paper and peek in the envelope to make sure I'm not missing out on a second page. But there's nothing. No. Oh, please, no. My hands tremble as dread creeps over me. The room is suddenly getting colder. I need to get out of here. Holding the paper in half, the sight that greets me next has me frozen on the spot. A pair of blood-soaked feet enters my field of vision, covered in gaping wounds, with skin eaten away to reveal flesh, blown, and all manner of things one isn't meant to see. It's too much. All of it is too much. I want to cry, call for help, but the words catch in my throat. Even my feet won't move, completely paralyzed out of terror. Lord, please help me. Oh boy. Let's save. I'd be terrified, but I'd look up, because closing my eyes, it's not going away. I need to face it. Oh, story updated? What story? What page is that? It says story updated, but I don't know where story is. Is it this? No. I'm not sure what story refers to. Whoever, whatever these feet belong to, I need to face it. And, and if I'm gonna die, if they're gonna kill me, at least I'll know what my killer looks like. A cold comfort. So with a deep breath, I summon every ounce of courage I have left in me and shift my gaze upwards. It's Sachiko! Please! Don't hurt me! <laughs> no! Without thinking, I scramble towards the door. I struggle to open it, but it won't budge. Stay Why now? I want it open now. My heart sinks as reality dawns in. I'm locked in. Locked in without that. Let me out! Let me out! Lord, please! Let me out! It slowly approaches me as I wrench the doorknob violently back and forth. It's gone. Where is it? No! We got a game over. Oh my gosh. I I should tell you all, like, I, I don't like the QTE aspect of this game. This is something I remembered. When I played it the first time, that QTE sound of the banging was so loud. I guess I turned the sound effects down. That's probably why I turned the sound effects down so gladly. The one problem, though, is first, hitting the Z key is really unnatural for me. And, like, I am jamming that key. And it's still not filling up. So... <laughs> Yes! The door finally swings open and I couldn't have been happier. <sighs> Wasting no time, I leap out the door and don't look back. My feet pound against the floor in rhythm with a loud, fast beating of my heart. <sighs> By the time I run past the hallway and find myself atop the grand staircase, my chest feels so tight like it's gonna burst. But that's nothing compared to the feeling of hope the sight of the exit gives me. Racing down the stairs, a breathy laugh escapes me and... <laughs> my shoe slips and I find myself falling. Down my back hits the ground and pain racks my body. My head grows fuzzy and my vision dims as I fight to stay conscious. No. Go away. The last thing I see are those feet before all I know is darkness. And we're gonna end this part here on a cliffhanger because I want to make sure this recording is going well. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching.
I'm very curious to know where this goes. Like, I, I know where this goes after this immediate part, but you know what I mean. Uh, so leave a comment, and I'll see you next time. Bye!